One of the Australian politicians I mentioned in my opening editorial is LNP Senator Jared Reddick. I'm delighted to say he joins me now. Jared, thank you for your time. I, I said in my opening that words are cheap. Action is a price too high for most politicians to pay to put a stop to the cultural rot. You've been prepared to pay that price. What's your experience been in Parliament? Uh, good evening, Corey. And I have to say that was quite the uh, opening speech you gave there tonight. I'm not sure that uh, it was the best thing that you actually left politics. Uh, you've certainly got plenty of fire left in your belly. Uh, look, you know, politics uh, has been an interesting experience for me. Uh, I think the thing that has struck me the most is the in, uh, uh, unwillingness by our leadership to take accountability uh, for their responsibilities. Uh, this is an incredibly position, uh, posi uh, privileged position that we are in, and we are dealing with people's lives and livelihoods. This isn't a football contest where we're talking about points on a scoreboard. We are talking about the well-being of every individual Australian citizen, uh, and in some cases, obviously, uh, we have our, our actions have consequences overseas as well. Uh, but we have to remember that, and, and that's you know when I give my stump speech when I go around. Uh, parts of Queensland and Australia, I always say what drives me is the gratitude that I have towards my forefathers and that inspires me to make sure that our children get the same opportunities our forefathers gave to us and to make sure that we fight for everyone that gets out of bed every day and puts their nose to the grindstone. And we have to remember that. And that is the outcome that we have to achieve is that we get better opportunities for our children. So we need to be outcome focused. Many people in leadership roles, whether it's in government or the corporate sector or the superannuation sector or union sector, are driven by their own personal goals rather than sovereign outcomes that are going to lift the boat for all Australians. And that's what we have to do as politicians. That is, you know, the most important thing we can do. Jared, one of the things I always thought was that people go into politics, they should have some principles and framework in which defines how they're going to approach or respond to a problem. When they're abandoned uh, in political thought, then this traditional left-right divide becomes a united, whatever we can get away with policy approach. I don't think that's good for voters or the country. Um, and I think it's resulted in a, a dearth of real leadership that we've experienced in this, in this nation for quite some time now. How would you respond to that criticism? Yeah, look, I mean, it's a fair point. I sort of touched on it in the first statement. But the thing is that what I found is coming into government, this is my first government role in Australia, is the lack of quality assurance in regards to decision making. We are today driven by modellers and not measurers. So, you know, for example, just recently in estimates, I asked the new CSIRO chief, which of the one of the 40 models will Australia be applying? Uh, to calculate net zero and is there any regulatory arbitrage in that where Australia is going to get shafted because we aren't using the same models as other people and he just brushed it off and said well the great thing about science is is that we can all use different models and still come to the same result and then I was chopped off by the chair. People don't take their decision making uh, responsibilities serious enough and we need to be basing our decisions on facts not feelings and unfortunately today because the media uh, you know, uh, uh, and you know, we have such a one-sided media in the sense that all media pushes a narrative, regardless of whatever that narrative is. It is always you have to be on the side of the narrative, or you are otherwise a conspiracy theorist. The idea that you can actually have free thought and challenge the status quo or the particular narrative of the day—it's—it's it's virtually uh, political suicide to do that. You've summed that up beautifully, there, Senator. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.